London's burning, London's burning. A calamitous inferno. The great fire of London raged across England's biggest city, turning its buildings into smoke. Today, given the wealth, power and influence here, it's almost impossible to imagine that this once was reduced to a burning pile of buildings. Marking the spot, the monument, placed metres away from where the fire began. Today, an ordinary office building stands here, but at the time it was the site of the Royal Bakery. The baker himself blamed for failing to put out the ovens which sparked off the blaze. But London rose again. The year before, it had survived a deadly plague. Out of the ashes also emerged new urban planning methods, even the beginnings of the insurance industry. The Great Fire of London may now be consigned to the history books and even the nursery rhymes, but at the time it was a disaster of unprecedented proportions. The city, which you see behind me, was reduced to burnt tinder, and 100,000 Londoners, which was roughly a fifth of the city's population at the time, had been left homeless. It created a housing crisis on a scale which London had never experienced before. The determination to overcome the catastrophe is being commemorated in a series of art installations around the city, a testament to people's will to survive. There were only six deaths recorded and 80,000 people homeless, but then they really had to start again. There was no trade, there was no economy left. And in the end, cities aren't about buildings and streets and rivers, they're about, they're about the people who inhabit those places. And on the River Thames, the 120-metre-long sculpture of 17th-century London set alight, a monument to the disaster and a tribute to the people who made the city what it was, what it is now in all its diversity. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera, London.